Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Bickley. I'm Acting Senior Manager for Academic Liaison at the University of Adelaide Library. And I'm happy to be presenting a lightning talk today on some work we've done with NHMRC grant holders at the university around open access. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I am speaking to you from Ghana land, unceded land, which I am very lucky to live, work and play on. And I'd like to acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country. So one of the key objectives in the University of Adelaide's operational plan for the research and engagement team, the team of liaison librarians, is to support research excellence and impact. And this includes communication of and support and advocacy for the variety of open access publishing options available. One element of this support is helping authors to understand how to comply with the open access policies of their funder and or the university. In September 2022, the National Health and Medical Research Council, the NHMRC, a major funder of research in Australia, updated that open access policy. For some time, this updated policy applied only to new grants. But from 1st of January 2024, the policy applied to all current NHMRC grants, regardless of when they were granted. The new policy requires all NHMRC funded outputs to be available open access immediately upon publication under a CCBY Creative Commons license, which was quite a departure from the previous policy, which allowed for an embargo on the full text. So we decided to undertake a targeted communication campaign to researchers holding NHMRC grants to ensure that they were aware of their requirements under the updated policy, and also that the liaison librarians were there to support them in understanding how to meet them. We worked with colleagues in the university's research services department to procure a list of all current NHMRC grant holders in the university, and an email was sent out to them reminding them that immediate open access under a CCBY license was now required, and highlighting the ways in which the liaison librarians could support them in understanding their options for publishing open access via information on our web pages, email, one-to-one -one consults, and we also highlighted that there was a publishing open access workshop running the week after as part of our research support workshop program, which we encourage them to register for. We received a good level of response to the email and quite quickly. So many of those who responded were aware of the policy, but appreciated the opportunity just to confirm via attendance at our workshop or a chat with their liaison librarian that they were on the right track to compliance. Some others were fairly confident with their understanding of the policy requirements, but wanted to acknowledge their appreciation of our offer of support and said they would reach out if they needed to. The liaison librarians received some invitations to speak to groups of researchers at school meetings or similar about the NHMRC open access policy and how we could support. A few who responded were feeling less confident about their understanding of open access options and wanted to book a more in-depth consult with their liaison librarian to ensure that they were going to be compliant. This activity did give rise to some challenges. Firstly, around research expectations of what we could support. We received a number of questions around NHMRC grants and outputs, which were not around open access and out of the scope of what we could help with. So the team had to work out that this was not a library question and direct them onto someone who could help. We could try to mitigate this in future outreach by including a line in the email that for any other questions about their grant, researchers should contact the post award section of the university's research services department. Another challenge was the temporary but fairly sudden increase in workload for the liaison librarian team in dealing with inquiries resulting from the email campaign. As this was the first time we had done this kind of targeted outreach to grant holders, we had no idea what level of response we would get. Next time, we will consider options such as perhaps scheduling a webinar specifically on the NHMRC open access policy to take place shortly after the email goes out to help the team manage the workload of the response. To conclude, we feel that this targeted communication was a positive and successful approach to supporting researchers holding NHMRC grants to meet their open access requirements. And we intend to repeat this exercise on an annual basis as part of our commitment to our strategic objective of supporting research excellence and impact in the university. Thank you very much.